Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top seven tips for improving your writing productivity. Hi everyone, if you are new here, my name is Dr. Sam Monroe and I am an ecologist. That means I study plants and animals and how they interact with their environment. I have studied all sorts of wildlife, everything from sharks to shrimps to shrubs, and here on YouTube, I like to make videos about ecology in the media, try and deal with cool ecological questions, and talk about what it's like to be a scientist and how to build a career in STEM. Today's video is all about helping you become a more productive writer. If you are a scientist or an academic, then you probably already know that writing is critical to your job. More than time in the lab, more than getting to go out and spend time in the field, scientists and academics are behind their desks writing up their papers and doing analysis. Your success as a scientist or academic is of course going to depend on a lot of different factors, but in my opinion, there is no skill as critical as being a good writer. It is essential that you move your manuscripts from start to published as quickly as you can. This is because nothing is more important than building up a big stack of publications to your name to help you ensure you get that next academic job or promotion or grant funding. But how can we become more productive writers and make the most of the time that we set aside for writing? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you my top seven tricks that I use to write effectively and quickly and get my papers published. Tip number one, write every day for at least 30 minutes a day. Most people believe that in order to get writing done, they need to set aside large blocks of time to write, maybe a day, maybe a couple days in a row. But this really isn't the case and it's not the best writing strategy. I'm not gonna sit here and say it wouldn't be nice to have a whole day or a couple days to get writing done, but the reality is as an academic, it's hard to find that kind of time. There's usually a lot of other responsibilities on your plate, like teaching or things you have to do for the university, like sitting on a committee. So finding a whole day just to dedicate to writing is pretty rare. Instead, the strategy that the most prolific writers and publishers actually use is to make time for writing every single day, even if they can only find 30 minutes. In my case, I try to set aside one hour every day to write, but honestly, some days with all the other things I have to do, even one hour not, might not be achievable, so I still try and find at least 30 minutes. And while that may not seem like much, just one hour or 30 minutes a day, if you do that every day for a week, you've basically been writing for five hours that week. That's nearly a full work day. So it really does add up. Of course, you don't need to be limited to one hour. If you have more time for writing, write more. If you follow no other piece of advice in this video, definitely do this one. Just try and start the habit of writing for at least 30 minutes to one hour every day. I think you will be amazed after a couple of weeks how much you've been able to accomplish. Tip number two, do your writing at the start of the day. For most of us, our best brain, our most creative and productive brain is the brain that we have in the morning. But as the day progresses and our brain gets bogged down with other tasks and responsibilities, our creativity and productivity tends to drop. For that reason, I always try and do my one hour of writing at the very start of my day as the very first task that I try to accomplish. This way I'm taking advantage of my best self and I'm using my best, most creative brain for writing. What I also really love about this strategy is that by the time that one hour is up, I've already gotten a lot done with my day. I feel really accomplished and now I can go out and do the other tasks that I have to get done. I personally find it is so important to try and get my writing done before I get distracted by everything else happening in my office. And speaking of distractions, this brings us to tip number three. Tip number three to becoming a more productive writer Eliminate distraction. When you are doing your 30 minutes to one hour of writing every day, it is so important that you don't get distracted and maintain your focus. If somebody distracts you or you get an email or a text message that pulls you out of what you're doing, it could actually take you anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to refocus back on your writing task. So when I get to work in the morning and I'm starting my writing, 
I eliminate distraction. I turn my phone off, I don't check emails, I don't check social media, and I also put on some noise canceling headphones with some good music so that that ambient noise in the office doesn't distract me. This is particularly important for me because I work in a shared office with several other people, so there's a lot of opportunities to get distracted. If you are also working in a shared office and you're trying to eliminate distraction, another strategy I suggest is just tell people that you don't want to be distracted for however long you're planning to write, whether that's 30 minutes, an hour, or longer. I've actually seen people put signs on the back of their chairs that say do not disturb when they're trying to get their writing done. Another possible strategy is to establish office quiet time. This is a period of time during the day when everybody in the shared office agrees there won't be any chit chat and everyone's just going to focus on their work. Regardless of how you manage to do it, just make sure that when you set aside that 30 minutes to one hour just for writing, you protect that time and you eliminate distraction. Tip number four, don't wait till you feel motivated to start writing. One of the things I commonly hear from students and young academics is that they need to feel internally motivated in order to sit down and start writing. But if you wait for the stars to align and for yourself to feel really, really ready to write, you could be waiting a while. There are plenty of mornings where I go to work and the last thing that I wanna do is sit down and write. But no matter how I'm feeling, I always try. I always try and sit down and start the writing process. And the amazing thing that happens is after about 10 minutes of writing, I start to feel motivated and I'm able to write a lot more than I thought I was gonna be capable of writing when I first sat down to the task. This is because motivation comes from action, not the other way around. Think of it as mental inertia. It is a lot easier to keep an object moving than to get it started. And it is the exact same with our brains and writing. Don't wait to feel inspired or motivated to start writing. Set aside the time that you're going to write, stick to it, and just start the process. I guarantee you, after about 10 or 15 minutes, you're probably gonna feel a lot more motivated than you thought you were. Tip number five, do not edit while you write. I think this is something we're all guilty of. It is very tempting that when we're writing, we write a few sentences, maybe a paragraph, and we're really pleased with ourselves. So we go back and we reread that paragraph to see how it sounds. But then we start tweaking that paragraph, don't we? We start editing it for things like grammar and word choice. And before you know it, You've just spent an hour on Google looking up different synonyms for the word therefore. Consequently, thus, ooh, as a result, that's a good one. Unfortunately, as satisfying as it is to check your grammar and you know get the word choice just right, it really isn't the best use of your time for writing and it certainly isn't the best use of your most creative and productive brain. This is not to say that editing isn't a really important task, just that it's probably a task that is best left for later once you've got more of your initial draft on the page and set aside time when maybe your brain isn't going to be at its absolute best and most creative. In fact, sometimes when I'm doing an initial draft, I don't even write full sentences. I do things in point form. And when I can't think of, of the right word that I'm searching for, I'll sometimes leave it blank or just use some generic filler word and I'll come back to it later. Because really, what you want to get done with that 30 minutes to one hour is get your ideas on paper. You can worry about the editing later. Tip number six, you don't have to start your paper at the start. Sometimes when we start writing our scientific paper, we think that we need to start at the very beginning of the paper with the introduction. But this isn't necessarily the case and it isn't always the best strategy. When I'm writing a paper, I prefer to start with sections that are a little bit easier and a little more concrete, like writing the methods or the results if I've already done some of the analysis. I find these sections are a little more straightforward to put together and then I've got something on paper, I've gotten the ball rolling, which makes it a lot easier to go back and write the other sections like the introduction and discussion. The main point I'm trying to make here is simply you don't have to start with the first line of the first paragraph of the introduction. You can start anywhere in the manuscript where you think you have enough to start writing. Finally, we have tip number seven. Get feedback as you go and send your first draft to your co-authors or supervisors when you feel like your manuscript is 80 to 90% complete. I know, especially for PhD students and early career researchers, 
Getting feedback from your co-authors and supervisors can be a very nerve-wracking experience. To be honest, all of us, I think no matter where we're at in our academic or scientific careers, get a little nervous when we send our work out for feedback. Unfortunately, this fear of feedback can lead to a really bad writing habit, particularly when you're first starting out. What I have noticed is that PhD students and early career academics tend to work on their manuscript until they think it is absolutely perfect. They edit it over and over and over again before they send it to their supervisors. But let's get real for a minute. Do you ever really feel like it's actually perfect? Like you're really, truly finished? I can tell you, I never feel that way. While I totally understand the impulse to edit something until it's perfect before you send it off to a supervisor, it's actually wasted time. Your supervisors, no matter how perfect you think your draft might be, are going to make some big changes to your paper. They're gonna tell you to cut certain things out, they're gonna want you to add whole sections in, they might want you to do some different analysis. Trust me when I tell you, there's gonna be a lot of track changes. This work is an insane, tangled web of inscrutability. In the fun, grad students will analyze this for centuries way. No, in the Unabomber way. So if you spend a lot of time editing something so that it's absolutely perfect, this is actually time your supervisors and co-authors could be spending editing that first draft and giving you substantial feedback. Spending lots of time on your early draft getting everything just right is simply not the best use of your time and can actually delay getting your paper published. With that in mind, I suggest that when you feel like your first draft of a manuscript is about 80 to 90% done, you send it to your supervisors and co-authors for feedback. Because we generally never feel like something is truly done or feel completely satisfied with our work, if we feel like something is about 80 to 90% done, it's probably in pretty good shape. And at this stage, it needs guidance and contributions from your other authors. If it makes you feel better, tell your supervisors and co-authors that this is your strategy, that you haven't done the final polish yet, but you're looking for feedback on the general content and analysis before you move forward. Personally, I always think it is better to get feedback early in the drafting process rather than later. All right, now I must confess that I did not come up with all of these writing tips on my own. I actually learned a lot of them through courses and books that I have read by an organization called ThinkWell. ThinkWell is an Adelaide-based organization that uses psychological and educational research to assist people to achieve their maximum productivity. They offer literature and courses that are tailored just for academics on how to increase their research productivity, find an achievable work-life balance, and on how to be a better PhD supervisor and student. A lot of the tips that I talked about today, I originally learned from their books and courses. To be clear, I am not being sponsored by ThinkWell and they haven't paid me to say this. This is just an organization that I've learned a lot from and I think you would learn a lot from them too. Well, that is it. Those are my top seven tips for increasing your writing productivity. Let me know in the comments below. Have you ever tried any of these strategies before? Did they work? Have they not worked? What do you do to become a more productive writer? If you found this video useful, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, hit that bell to be notified about the next video I do all about building a career in STEM.